Life is like a dream. Now, what is a dream? A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. And people spend about two hours dreaming every night. Dreaming is something that everyone listening to this experiences. So I want to show you how your life itself is like a dream. Think about your dreams. What goes along with that? Your life is like a dream. The first thing is, a dream doesn't last long. Your life doesn't last long. It says in Psalm 90 and verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. You wake up and tell someone your dream. They don't really think much about it, and it's soon forgotten. That's like your life. You spend your years as a tale that's told. You might wake up and tell someone your dream, but the next day you've probably forgot the dream, and the person that you told the dream to probably forgot it quicker than you did. In James 4.14, it says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away, just like the dream. Just like a dream, your life is here for a very little while, and then it's just gone. It's just vanished. A hundred years from now, if, if the Lord doesn't come back, a hundred years from now, your great-great-great-grandkids probably won't even know what you look like. They probably won't even know much about you. They may have your last name. I mean, I, I don't know my great-great-grandparents on either side. I don't know what they look like. I don't know their name. And they lived on this earth for, uh, they could have lived 80 years. Who knows? I don't know much about them. It, your life is like a dream. It's just vanished. In Psalm 144 and verse 4, it says, Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. You know, sometimes you're in the middle of a dream and it seems like you're in it for a really long time. But dreams usually only last for 5 to 45 minutes. It may seem like you was in that dream for a while, but it probably only lasted a few minutes. I've looked at the clock at night and fell asleep and then had a dream. And what seemed like two hours in my dream or like I'd been asleep forever, I had woke back up and I'd only been asleep for like 15 minutes. You know, while you're in a dream, like in your life, it could seem like it's lasted a really long time sometimes. You know, your life, at certain stages in your life, it seems like you were just in that stage of your life forever. Like my elementary school days, that seems like, 15 years I felt like I was in elementary school for 15 years and I didn't even get held back but I felt like I was in it for 15 years I felt like high school was about what it was about four years and then my 20s I didn't even feel like that was 10 years and in my 30s I feel like I just turned 30 so I've, I'm in my 30s I feel like I just turned 30 and I'm mid 30s so it's like no, the different stages of your life they feel like they're they're not as long, or they feel some of them feel longer. Your dreams are like that. When you're in this life, there's times where it seems like it's going by slow, but it's actually passing by at a really fast rate. Standing next to eternity, your life is shorter than the shortest dream you've ever had. You know, you ever had a dream so good, and you try to go back to sleep to get back into the dream? Parts of your life are like that too where you're going to wish that you could go back to that part of your life. Enjoy every second of the grain of sand in your hourglass because you're probably going to want to go back to that grain of sand sometime. I think that would be pretty cool if you could just go back to certain parts of your life and live it over again, but you can't. A dream doesn't last long. Your life doesn't last long. You can't take your dream possessions with you. That's the second thing. 
You know, you can't take your dream possessions with you. Just like you can't take your possessions and this life with you when you die. The Lord says in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. As a kid, I would have dreams that I got a new toy, a new basketball goal, some new baseball cards or something like that. And sometimes I would know I was dreaming when I got those things. So I would I would grip onto those things in my in my dream and I would have them in my hand in, uh, in my dream and hope that I had them in my hand when I woke up. I remember doing that as a kid. But and that's how some people act with their real life worldly possessions. Maybe they even want to be buried with a certain material possession. But these possessions are also like a dream. When you open your eyes in eternity, you're not going to have that basketball go in your hand, those ball cards in your hand. You're not going to have none of that. All this material stuff you have is going to burn up anyway. In 2 Peter 3.10, it says, it, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away like a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's why I just, I can't get impressed with material things. I'm just very unimpressed by it. I don't get impressed by cars. I don't get impressed by any type of vehicles. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't even like buying clothes. I'm just not into material stuff. Because to me, it's just so temporary and it's all going to be burned up. Now, you have to have material things. Uh, to, to, to get by in, a, in a physical, this physical world we're in, but it's just all going to be burned up. In uh, Job 121, it says, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, you leave your dream, and you wake up with the same thing you had on. You came into this life naked, and that's how you're going to leave. But where are your affections? Are they down here in this dream or up there where things are really going to mean something? Are they up in the third heaven with the Lord? When New Jerusalem comes down from God out of heaven, prepared as a, a bride adorned for her husband, you might say you're finally going to have your dream home. People talk about a dream home down here. Well, you're not really going to have your dream home until eternity until you finally get with the Lord. The next thing, if you die in your dream, you wake up in reality. Think about that. A lot of times, sometimes in my dreams, if I fall off of a mountain or a building or tragically die, as soon as I tragically die in my dream, I just I wake up in reality. In this life, when you die, you're going to wake up in the place that you're really going, that you really are going to live in, heaven or hell. You see, I close my eyes in death, I'm going to wake up with the Lord. In your dream, you tragically die or whatever, fall off of a mountain, get hit by a car, usually you just wake up. It startles you to being awake again. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. See, the moment you close your eyes in death, you'll be present with the Lord. Philippians 1, 23 through 24, he said, For I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He says he's got a desire to depart and to be with Christ. Showing you he wasn't just going to be soul sleeping somewhere. He was going to be with the Lord the moment he closed his eyes in death. Death doesn't mean your existence is over. You're just going to be somewhere so much better if you're saved. And if you're lost, you're going to be somewhere so much worse. But if you're saved, it's going to be a dream come true, as they say. You ever heard somebody say, this is a dream come true? That will never be more true than when a saved person dies, closes their eyes in death. It will be like they're waking up from a dream. 
you, and you'll, the next thing is you're going to be so happy when you wake up, just like you are with many dreams. That is if you're saved. See, there have been times when I'm dreaming and it's a horrible dream where I'm in prison or someone's died or a tragedy has happened and then I wake up. The feeling of relief when waking up is one of the greatest feelings in the world. And people spend a lot of time being scared of death. But if you're saved, you would open your eyes into relief at a much greater extent than opening your eyes from a terrible dream. I, the feeling that I have when I opened my eyes from a terrible dream and I realized that that wasn't a reality, that's one of the greatest feelings that you can really have, really. I don't, just that, that relief feeling, that, that quick, overwhelming sense of relief after a horrible dream that it wasn't true, it's one of the greatest feelings ever. Think about that when it comes to closing your eyes in death and waking up, absent from the body, present with the Lord. A dream come true. Your life down here is like a bat. Even even the, the best life a person can have down here is a bad dream of hardships, waking up early, getting sick, body aches, people dying, people acting like idiots, pain, sadness, sorrow, disappointments. The best life down here is nothing. Uh, when, a, when a saved man closes his eyes in death and he opens them up in the presence of the Lord, no good life down here can even compare to that. If you're saved, then why do you perceive death as such a bad thing? Like, I feel like people see that their death a lot of times is a tragedy, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's a victory. It's not a tragedy. It's a victory. Now, you may could tra die in a tragic way, but when it comes right down to it, you are better off dead than you were alive because look where you're going. Now, it may not be as good for the people that's left behind that you left behind because like Paul said, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. But in the sense of your state, you, you're better off. And the Lord says in Psalm 116, 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This is something you can't even see in your wildest dreams. What you're going to see when you're absent from the body present with the Lord, and when you see your eternity, what God has in store for you. Now, another thing about dreams in life, you spend a lot of time falling. I can't tell you I've, uh, how many times I've went to sleep, and within minutes, I'm having a falling dream. I have a dream where I'm, I'm getting on the school bus, and the door slams in my face, and I just fall backwards, and then I I immediately wake up and it seems as if I'm falling back down on the bed like I was like I was literally falling in real life. I don't I don't understand it. It freaks me out, but I looked up the sudden muscle spasm that occurs when you wake up from a falling dream is called a hypnic jerk, which is a symptom of the sleep disorder called parasomnia. Whatever that means. But during REM sleep, the brain normally suppresses body movement to prevent people from acting out their dreams. So that, that's why a lot of times when you're asleep, you, you can't move. And in your dream, you can't move. It feels like you can't move. It, because something in your sleep suppresses body movement to prevent you from acting out the dreams. And see, that proves... To me, stuff like that just proves the Lord. I mean, I'm glad I can't act out my dreams. A lot of times I'm um, in some kung fu movie in my dream, and I don't, I don't want to knock my wife out, you know. I'm glad that I can't move in my dream. But it says sometimes it doesn't work properly, causing a hypnic jerk. And other symptoms of hypnic jerk include feeling like you're falling, startled feelings, increased heart rate when waking up, shallow breathing when waking up. You know, there's been cases where uh, 
people have hurt someone while they were asleep. And a woman even had to start sleeping in a separate room because her husband just turned into a killer when he went to sleep. And he was dreaming that he was fighting lions and snakes were biting him and he was having to beat off the snakes, but he was beating his wife up. I'm glad the Lord made it to where when I'm asleep, I can't act out my dreams. Because I don't want to knock my wife upside the head in my sleep. But that's why you can't, it seems like you can't move in your sleep. And like in some dreams, I'll be, I'll be trying to knock some guy out that's running up on me and I, I can't even move. I guess that's got something to do with it. But, you know, life is like a dream. You, All the time, very often, I'm dreaming I'm falling. And that's life. Proverbs 24, 16, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Life is like a dream. Life's like a dream. You spend a good portion of your time falling, but it shouldn't stop you from getting up. All the falling dreams I've had have never stopped me from going back to sleep. You see, anytime you fall, it should never stop you from getting up and trying again. You know, another thing is, the next thing is, sometimes you realize this isn't your world. When you're asleep, sometimes you have a lucid dream and you realize this isn't reality, this is a dream. Well, it's like that sometimes when you're in this real world down here, you realize this really isn't your real world. There's something more real than this. Sometimes when you dream, you know that you're dreaming. And I used to have this happen a lot as a kid growing up. I could interact with my dream. I knew I was dreaming and I'd just do whatever I wanted to do in the dream. This, And I found out later this is called lucid dreaming. I didn't even know it was a thing. I thought, I thought everybody did it and knew about it, knew that they were dreaming. But what causes lucid dreams is a shift in brain activity in the direction of waking during REM sleep. Dreaming causes the move towards lucid dreaming, creating a hybrid situation involving features of both REM sleep and waking. So sometimes when I'm in, I'm in a dream, something out of the ordinary in the dream will remind me, well, this isn't really reality. That person over there has four hands or something. And, it's, and I'm like, wow, this, I'm definitely dreaming. There's something off-putting, something that wouldn't normally be there that's like, hey, this is a dream. I'm dreaming. Everything's okay. That happens to me uh, uh, sometimes, especially growing up. But just like life as a Christian in 2024, you can just walk down the street and what you see is so strange. We'll show you this isn't your world. It's so backwards, so backwards from how God wanted it to be. And it reminds you, hey, this isn't my world. I belong somewhere else. In John 18, 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. The world is in our home and the devil is the God of this world right now. Second Corinthians 4, 4. And whom the God of this world hath bonded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, down here in this world, it's not your home. The God of this world is not the Lord right now. It's the devil. And things is going to stay really confusing and out of the ordinary and give you that uncanny valley feeling as they say because it's so backwards men are doing what's right in their own eyes and it's all messed up and you can look at it and and see this isn't your world you're part of a holy nation you are a citizen of heaven it says in 1 John 2 15 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him but a dream, it's like, it's like life. Sometimes you realize this isn't your world. Another thing, a lot of times 
a dream don't make sense. Most time it don't make sense. Life's like that too. Dreams don't make sense because the part of the brain responsible for making sense of things, it shuts off when you're asleep. Life is like that too. Look around. Things don't even make sense. This is because you're seeing men operate, like I said, doing what's right in their own eyes. Like in the book of Judges. Why do you think the book of Judges has some of the most, probably the most strange stories in the Bible? Is because men were doing what was right in their own eyes. Just pretty much every other story in Judges is pretty wild. And like I'll tell people the stories from the book of Judges and they just they just can't even believe that that's even in the Bible. And that somebody actually did the things that's that's written in the book of Judges. But the fact it, it doesn't make sense will sometimes cause you to realize you are in a dream. You'll, you'll be in your dream and stuff is just doesn't make any sense. And you're like, well, this can't be real. This is a dream. I'm dreaming. The fact that this real world is so messed up should, should cause you to realize this isn't of God. He isn't the author of confusion. It should make you realize this isn't your home and you should want to wake up. You should be looking forward to waking up. The next thing, you forget a lot of it, if not most of it. A dream is like that. You forget a lot of it, if not all of it, and most of it. Your life is like that. You forget a lot of it. Something I hate is when, when I have a, a wild dream and I can't remember it to tell my wife. You know, when you remember your crazy dream and you describe it to somebody like it's the trailer of a new movie. Like you have this awesome dream and you feel like you just want to tell it to somebody. But you forget most of your dreams. Now there's some dreams that freak me out so bad that I remember them to this day. Mostly involving my mother-in-law who don't listen to these lessons so I feel like I, I can say it. But she, my, my freakiest dreams is about my mother-in-law. It gives me chills every time that I even think about them. I don't even want to think about them. But the, the neurochemicals in the brain during sleep may be different from when we're awake, which could prevent us from consolidating memories and your dreams don't have structure. So since they don't have structure, it makes it hard to remember them. And dreams don't always follow a, a linear narrative like our waking experiences and uh, that's a, that's part of an article I read. That's why it's got those big words. But you see what I'm trying to say? It doesn't. The dreams are just so messed up in their structure, and they don't follow a narrative. It makes them hard to remember. And the chemicals in your brain during sleep may be different from when you're awake, which prevent you from the memories. There are some crazy dreams that do stick out, that I do remember. Just like in life, there's some crazy things that happen that you're never going to forget. You know, like this one dream I had, when I was running up a slide at my elementary school, and this thing chasing me, it looked like E.T. with rabies. It bit me in the back of my leg. I honestly felt like, I felt like I felt something on my leg. I never forgot that dream. But most of your dreams, you forget right when you wake up. Most stuff in your everyday, day-to-day -day life, you're going to forget. This is why people who want a lucid dream, they want to have lucid dreams, they will write their dreams down because they forget them. And if they don't remember what was going on when they were dreaming, when they go back to sleep and dream again, they're, they're going to be less likely to remember that they were dreaming. So they do this so it will help them identify when they're in a dream. They, they write it down. You forget it so fast, you, you would have to write it down as soon as you woke up most times. But your life is like a dream. You ever thought about just how much of your life you forget? And I ask people all the time. I, I, got a, I, I like to think I've got a pretty good memory about stuff that happens. And I'm always asking somebody, do you remember when we did this or that? And they'll be like, no, I don't remember that at all. Or I'll ask my grandparents, do you remember when I was little and we did this? And they don't remember it. 
or I run into an old high school friend or elementary school friend. And even though they saw my face for many years and I look mostly the same, they saw my face for many years and we hung out together at school, played on the playground together at school. They barely remember my name. They somewhat remember my face but they don't remember any of the experiences we had together. Think about that. You barely can remember the things you did with somebody in high school. Maybe you sit next to them every day in a certain class for many days. You barely remember, other than a few things, what went on in that class. Life is like a dream. You're going to forget most of it. Think back as far as you can remember. You might remember a few things from when you're like three or four, you know, sometimes I'm playing with my son outside and doing all this stuff with him. He's just four right now, and I'm thinking, I hope he will remember having all this fun with me outside on the trampoline, playing baseball, riding around. But I, I said that to say this, you spend so much time thinking on about these little bad things you know, Paul says these are a lot of afflictions that are but for a moment. You spend so much time thinking about that, but in a few days, you aren't even going to remember them. Most things you're going through in a few days, now there, obviously there are things people are going through that they struggle with every day, but a lot of these little trials that we have, you don't even remember them a year from now. You spend so much time caring what people say, but after a while, that person that said it ain't even going to remember who you are or even what what they said themselves. Life is like a dream. Another way life is like a dream, you're looking for meaning in it. You know, there's all kinds of stuff on the Internet where you can search for what does this dream mean. Now, I'm not one that really thinks that every dream has a meaning to it. In the Bible, they had meaning, for sure, because it was before the written word of God, so God was communicating with people in their dreams. You know, in the Bible, in Genesis 40, the butler and the baker found out the, the interpretation, the meaning of their dream through Joseph in Genesis 40. And then he interprets Pharaoh's dream in chapter 41. Or consider like in Daniel 2, Daniel interprets Nebuchadnezzar's dream. In the Old Testament, before the written word was complete, the Lord would talk to men in dreams and visions. I don't believe he's doing that today because we got a full, we got the complete word of God. So he's talking to me through that. Now, I do believe that there's, uh, God has allowed me to have dreams that's opened my eyes about things. I do believe that. And the Lord used that dream for the good. I do believe that. A lot of times people wake up and say, what does this dream actually even mean? Most times, probably nothing. What you need to find out is what, not the meaning of your dreams, you need to find out what is the meaning of your life. And the Bible has that answer. You know, you hear somebody say, what is the meaning of life? Well, that answer is in the Bible. Revelation 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's the meaning of life. That's why you're here. Give glory and honor to God. You're created for his pleasure. So you're looking for meaning in your dream. People are looking, people are all the time saying, what's the meaning of life? Life is just like a dream. And there are all different types of dreams. You know, you got nightmares. The, some of the worst type of dreams are nightmares. And nightmares are intense dreams that may provoke terror, anger, or disgust. You can usually remember them easily. They're very common. But remember Abimelech. He had a nightmare in Genesis 20 and verse 3. And how... God gave him a nightmare concerning Abram's wife, Sarah, remember? He, uh, Abimelech didn't know that Sarah was Abraham's wife, and he took Sarah. 
But then the Lord came into to him uh, in a dream and said, that is another man's wife. And he told him, thou art but a dead man. That was, Abimelech was king of Gerar. That was the, the nightmare on Gerar Street. The Lord could have smote him in his sleep, killed him in his sleep if he wanted to. But the Lord was long-suffering with him because he didn't know that was another man's wife. But you see, there's nightmares. There's not terrors. Also called sleep terrors are episodes where you partially awake from a slow-wave sleep, and they generally involve signs of extreme stress, like screaming or waving your limbs, you probably won't remember them. But a broken lamp or consumed, concerned roommate may clue you in to what happened. I got that out of an article I read about night terrors. And you see, when you have those night terrors, you'll do crazy junk in your sleep and then you don't remember it when you wake up. Another dream people dream about public nakedness. That's a big one. You know, who hasn't had a dream where they come into school and for whatever reason, the dream didn't explain it, but you were just, for some reason, you left your house naked and didn't notice it till you got in front of all your friends. That's a horrible dream. But if I take this life for granted, I'm going to be found naked at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, just for no reason, you know, I had every warning down here, hey, you need to, you, you need to have some personal righteousness, not for salvation, but so that you don't wind up naked at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, just like in the dream, for some unknown reason, you make it all the way to school and you're naked and you don't realize it until you get in front of your friends. Judgment seat of Christ is like that. A lot of Christians, they're just living their life down here and for some unknown reason, they get to the judgment seat of Christ and realize that they're naked. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 3, for, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. You don't want to get up there and be naked and they see your shame. You know, no personal righteousness at all for the Lord. You don't want that to happen. You know, you got what's called false awakenings. Sometimes you are in a dream and you wake up in the dream, but you're actually still asleep and in the dream. You're just dreaming that you woke up. I've had that happen before. Sometimes life is like that. Sometimes life can be going so good that you think you have arrived. You think you've arrived. You don't even look forward to the rapture anymore. You you are having a false awakening. You think things are so good down here that you might as well just be, this might as well be your heaven. You actually don't want the rapture to happen because things are going so good in your life. You've had some type of false awakening. You think you're living the, the American dream, as they say. You don't understand how messed up everything is and how even things the devil is throwing your way are just a false pleasure and a false happiness. Many times, they're just illusions to keep your affection on things down here. Now, obviously, if you're in the will of God and you're living for the Lord, you've got an overwhelming peace and you're happy and you got joy, but you're still going to be wanting the rapture to happen. When you stop wanting the rapture, when you stop looking forward to heaven, you're getting too comfortable. You're ha you've had a false awakening. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Down here, sometimes you think you're living, as they say, the American dream. And you think it's just going too good to the point that you don't, you just want to stay here. But you know, God appeared to Solomon in a dream with basically a blank check. It says in 1 Kings 3, verse 5 through 15, I'm going to read. It says, And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness. 
that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child, I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke. See, all this is going on in his dream. Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. It was all a dream, but it really, what went on in the dream really happened. Life is like that. This is really, this is like a dream you're living in, but it's really happening. This little dream you're living in down here is basically God giving you a blank check, just like he gave Solomon. And the way that you live in this temporary temporary world down here is how you fill out the check. You know, the, the opportunity and how far you go with this is up to you. Just like it was with Solomon. He could have asked anything in the dream, but he asked the right things. And he got even more than he asked for. You know, God's ba you're in a little dream down here. God's giving you a blank check. And he says, fill it out. And every day when you wake up, you're determining how you're filling out that check. If you get up and die daily, if you get up and reckon yourself to be dead to the flesh, and you walk in the spirit, you're really filling out that check really good. You know, they say a person has between 6,000 and 70,000 thoughts per day. What are you daydreaming about? Are you dreaming about anything worthwhile? Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you've got between 6,000 and 70,000 thoughts per day, what are you thinking about? You, you need to turn into your own daydream catcher because you're going to have a lot of thoughts going in that you shouldn't have. You need to turn to your own dream catcher. You know, what are dream catchers? I looked it up. It says, according to legend, dream catchers are hung above the bed or in the lodge near the sleeping area so that daylight can reach them. And the dream catcher's web catches all dreams and thoughts. The good dreams pass through the threads and slide down the feathers to reach the sleeper. The bad dreams are caught in the web and destroyed by the morning light. Some believe that the bad ideas are caught in the web and the good ideas pass through to the individual. I don't believe in dream catchers. I believe you need to become your own thought catcher. You know, part of spiritual warfare is guarding your thought life, your daydream life. You are your own security guard to your brain. And you can't let wicked thoughts live in your mind. You have to be your own dream catcher. Cutting through every thought that doesn't please Jesus Christ. Don't let it live in your mind. You know, there's other types of dreams. Some sl suffer from sleep paralysis. And sleep paralysis, the person can't move, and they feel a presence of something sinister in the room. They, they may even feel a pressure on their chest. And they, uh, this has been called an incubus hallucination that's pretty creepy but this is like your life some people feel pressure on their chest paul said being pressed out of measure above strength second corinthians 1 8 
Sometimes the devil does all he can to get a place in your life. Just like those people who got sleep paralysis, they feel that sinister thing in your room. You don't want to give place to the devil. Don't give him any room in your life. But life, it's like dreams. There's all different types of dreams. There's all different things that go on in your life. But that story about Solomon, that's an amazing story. He was a, oh, he had that conversation with God in his sleep. God basically gave him a blank check, and he he put the right things on the check. Down here in this little dream, God's giving you a blank check. Every day when you get up, you're filling out that check. And if you fill it out with the right things, you're going to reap the right things in eternity. You're building, you're building down here. Are you building it with gold, silver, and precious stones? Or are you building it with wood, hay, and stubble? If you're building it with gold, silver, and precious stones, you're filling out that blank check really good. And it's going to be really good in eternity. But life, it's like dreams. It's short. What are you doing with it? It's going to be over before you know it. Your life is a vapor. You spend your years as a tale that is told. It's a shadow. Are you using your time wisely? Are you using this day wisely? It may not mean much to you today, but there's coming a day when you're going to wish you could go back to these days you're in now.